Nye nye everyone, this is Thermite, and this is Shimanami Tasagari, Volume 3. So, last volume, um, like, the mo most of the volume was about Misura, and about, you know, his struggles, and the fact that, at the very end, like, it, it didn't really wrap up nicely. Like, as I recall, the last thing we got, well, not the last last thing we got, but the last thing we got for his story was just he ran away from the festival, from Tasuku, because he wasn't okay with it. Like, he wasn't okay with being in public like that. It just, it was too much for him too quickly, yeah. And Tasuku wanted to ask, like, hey, what did I do wrong? Like, what could I have done to make this better? And no one could give him an answer. But the real, not the real ending, but, like, the ending ending, which I think that this, the Volume 3 is going to really follow up on, is this. That we're seeing Tsubaki, like, Tsubaki heard from his dad that, oh, you know, that that cat clowder, those group of like LGBT renovators, he mentioned, uh, like he didn't mention Tasuku, but like he described Tasuku. And now Tsubaki is digging into that a little. And as we can see here uh, in the series, the goldfish, like, or like goldfish and the, uh, the goldfish bowl or like the goldfish aquarium has always symbolized like a world of acceptance, this separate world where you can be yourself out, you know, separate from the outside world where you have to lie. And we can see here, I don't know if I caught if I caught this last time, but Tsubaki is looking in on the goldfish. So this could be one of two things to me. Either he's just interested in Tasuku, like not in a sexual way, but just like in a, uh, I want to know more, which that'd be interesting. Or the more obvious answer is that he is in fact gay or at the very least like, you know, questioning. And so like Tasuku might have more of a chance with him than he thought. Tasuku has repeatedly in the series like acted as if Tsubaki is 100% straight, but I mean, obviously, they're at school. Tasuku's hiding it. Why wouldn't Tsubaki hide it if he were gay? So I'm quite excited to see where this could possibly go. Because, like, I'd be happy either way. This series is very good when it comes to, like, complex human interactions. So as much as I would like to end this with, like, you know, Tasuku, Tsubaki, OTP, at the same time, like, if it turns out Tsubaki's not really gay, like, if it turns out that he just wants to, like, hang out with them, or, you know, you know, if he's just curious in a, you know, in a way where, like, in the end he turns out not to be gay, that's, that's fine. It'll be interesting regardless. So I'm quite, quite interested in it, especially since Volume 3. The reason why I brought all this up is because he's on the cover of Volume 3. That's definitely him. And this is uh, Tasuku in the background. And then, you know, anonymous there as always. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, that's so good. I, I love that the shaved ice kind of like, it doesn't directly do it, but, you know, there is a rainbow here. And also, we have anonymous making the shaved ice for everyone. Ah, uh, this is great. Like, right now, it's still snowing in Canada, so it's not the greatest time for shaved ice. But this does a fantastic job of making me feel warm because of, you know, this sky, which is insane. The fact that a sky is able to make me feel warm because it is a it's a summer sky. There's clearly like, you know, a nice shining light on everyone except for Anonymous. You know, you can see some shadow here, but everyone else feels warm and then they're eating something nice and cool. That's like that is so cool. It is very difficult to make the reader feel hot and then feel hot and then want to feel cool. Man, this does it. This absolutely does it. Oh, they all look like they're having a great time. <laughs> also, cats. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this last volume, but I don't know what the cats are meant to symbolize. Like, obviously, there's Cat Clowder. That is, you know, our main group. If I had to, like, guess based on what we've seen so far, I would say that cats sort of symbolize... I guess, like, they're the next step above Goldfish. Like, goldfish and the goldfish aquarium symbolizes this idea of being safe, of a world where you are accepted, or like, you know, a closed-off area where you can be you. Whereas cats don't really care about a world where you can be you. A cat can go anywhere and feel nice and comfy. So I think that's kind of it. Like, Cat Clowder wants to become cats. And, you know, there's always a cat there. Cat sort of symbolizes this ability to go out into the outside world and be yourself and to be, like... To not care whether you're accepted or not, really. To just be yourself and be cute and adorable by virtue of being you. And that doesn't work for everyone. Like, clearly, um, Misura can't be a cat right now because 
it was it was a bit too much too soon. In any case, let's get right into it. Before summer vacation, I got hurt and tried to kill myself. At the end of summer vacation, I hurt someone else, and even now, I'm still here, living peacefully. Yeah. This is also such a cool concept. The idea of, like, taking a small ferry to and from an area, like, daily. Like, to and from school, for instance. There's something really nice about that. I guess because it's, like, super novel to me. It's something I've never really done. I Actually, hmm. Yeah, I've been on a fishing boat, and, like, a really small boat. And I've been on, like, a giant cruise liner. But I've never been on, like, a medium-sized ferry. And I definitely don't do it often. Oh, wait a minute. They live in a place called Shiman. For some reason, you know, I have never looked into what Shimanami Tasugare means. Like, the usual places that immediately, like, explain what a series means, don't. Like, every time I've, like, looked up Mbaka updates, for instance, to see, like, how far ahead they are, I've I've never gotten a translation for it. I'm not going to right now, but... I assume, like, Tasugare probably connects to Tasuku, right? That's what I always assume. And then Shiminami, I assume, is just the place they live. Or the Shiminami area. Yeah, that's... This is also... Like, I can't understate how powerful this is. The fact that at the start of the series, he was dreading coming to school. He thought that his life was over. But right now, he's back in school, and no one's talking about him. There are, the rumors aren't, like, festering. They aren't growing or anything. It's just, well, we're back to school. No one cares. No, I don't think he did, right? Yeah, the call came in before that. Okay. The last step is just to rely on manual labor and stamina. Right. He still has to decide at some point here, like, what are we doing with Triangle Manor? Ah, oh, okay, this looks really cool. This, like, this is... Like, renovating a house really is... So a nice midpoint between a creative endeavor and something very, like, you know, physical and real. Like, the problem with a lot of creative endeavors, from what I've heard from very creative people, is that sometimes there's a sense of, like, well, is there a point to this? Like, if you're doing something just for you, or even if you're doing something for the purpose of, like, making money, like commissions or whatnot, it can be very easy to become, like, depersonalized from it. But this is a situation in which, like, they're, you know, they're fixing a house. There's always going to be a distinct like end point, but as they're fixing the house, they're able to like put their own stamp on it. They're able to, you know, express their own individuality. Also, in general, the construction and like fixing places is it feels like a very rewarding thing to do. Because there is a absolute outcome at the end. Like either you mess it up and there are problems they need to be fixed, or you complete it and then there's a nice like, you know, a nice floor or a nice like set of stairs or something. And it's, you know, it was created through your effort and the effort of other people working alongside you. Oh, wait, what? Okay. So the two of them are here now. I assume, okay, so I assume Subaki must have just said something like, hey, uh, I'd like to help out. And his dad was like, okay, sure, why not? Like, let's go together. Like, you know, just for the sake of, hey, let's, you know, do something cool for the community. Yeah, because that's right. Community Development Department of City Hall. So he like he'd be like in contact with them quite a bit. In fact, we saw that last volume, but he probably wouldn't be like actually hauling cement with them most of the time. <laughs> hmm. What a coincidence. Oh man. This is nice though. Like at this point, Subaki is the outsider here. Like even though Subaki is usually the most popular guy ever, Right now, Tasuku has a very strong connection with everyone else in Cat Clouder. Like, if things get too intense, or if he wants to run away, like, he shouldn't at this point, but if he does, he has an out. He can just ask anyone there, like, hey, I, I need to go. <laughs> this is getting too tense for me, and they'll make an excuse for him. So, okay, this is pretty nice. Careful not to leave anything unmixed on the bottom of the sides. Yeah. Mixing cement is hard work. I've only had to do it a few times, but uh, it's really fun, though. Hmm. You're going to make it go to my head. This is really cool. Like, yeah, 
Tsubaki, as much as he's been idolized through Tasu's eyes and therefore through the viewpoint of the series, he's just a kid. <laughs> okay. Even though I put my guard up, Tsubaki kun continues to fit in more and more. Right. I mean, like, he's doing it because he's just a chill guy, though. Like, it's not a problem, right? Like, I, I do agree. Like, I empathize with Tasuku here. I am not a person who finds it very easy to mix in with people. Like, I am an introvert at heart. It takes a lot of effort for me to mix in with people. And even though I can feel like an extrovert at times, it's because I'm putting in, like, 200% of the effort I want to put in. <laughs> so I've definitely been here, but I've just, I've personally learned over time that, you know, if you want to fit in, you just got, you've got to put in the effort. And once you put in enough, and once people know you, then, you know, then you're free to slack off a bit or to be introverted and people will still, you know, take you seriously. They'll still respect you because at that point they know that, you know, you're not just there being creepy. They, they have a good sense for what you're really like when you're trying to, you know, do stuff. Aw, he's such a nice guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> he's making a UFO. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, Tasuku, I forgot about that. Tasuku does like the occult. We brought that up in like chapter one, but they haven't really touched on it too much. Oh, that's really nice, though. Like. Older kids and adults, like, goofing around to make a kid feel better is one of my favorite things ever. I'm not quite, I'm not quite the kind of adult that would do something like that in a way that seems cool, but I want to be. Or, like, I try. I can't quite pull it off, but thankfully, also when it comes to kids, if I screw up and I'm not that cool, hopefully they'll forget about it. Oh? Wait a minute. They know each other? Hmm. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. Wish back then, I never expected you really would end up as a man. Wait a minute. Okay, is he a trans man? I guess, huh. Wait. Yeah, I guess he is a trans man. Also, wait a minute. Let me look at the cover. Oh, is that him? Is that him or is that Tsubaki? I thought this was Tsubaki. I guess he is a. I guess that is a little too much. Oh, uh, like they're right next to one another. So let's take that mental image. I guess mostly the eyebrows. Tsubaki's eyebrows are thinner, and his hairstyle is a bit more swept. Yeah. So yeah, this is Tsubaki. Okay. Yeah, because the eyebrows are a bit thicker here, and his he doesn't have the sweet like he doesn't really have bangs at all. His hair is kind of like sticking up. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Also, because all the characters are so well developed, every time someone does this, like I can never play it off as them being cool. I always feel really bad for them because they have to put on a brave face, especially since um Tasuku's here and he's such an impressionable kid. Like, all the adults, if something really hits home with them, they have to still, like, put on a brave face as long as Tasku's there. Like, I guess we might go deeper into him later on, but, uh. All the kids, like, all the adults in the series are adults that I would like to be when I become an adult. And the fact that I still don't consider myself an adult shows that I need to grow up, <laughs> I suppose. Hmm. Does this look like a heart? Yeah, it looks tasty. Is that a compliment? This is nice. Like, they're starting to become friendly with one another. There's two goldfish doing well at my house. Wait a minute. Oh, fuck, I'm an idiot. I forgot about that. I forgot about one of my, one of my favorite scenes in the entire series. Like, stop. Can't you see the goldfish are going to die? That, oh, uh, it was those goldfish. Oh, I forgot about that. Like, it, oh, man, that really does change the metaphor, like, not a lot, but a bit. Because he really did, like, break up this fight between Tasuku and Misora, where the goldfish, you know, the metaphorical and the real goldfish were both going to die. He picked them up. He brought them home. 
and he took care of them and he was just kind of staring at them in the same way that he was observing Tasuku and Mizora's fight there. So even then, I don't like because of the way he's saying this, he seems a tiny bit offensive. While at the same time, I think it is just genuinely like he doesn't know how to talk about this. So he's trying to bring it up in sort of a casual way. Your legs okay? That was a pretty big bang. That's true. Like, Misora was very, like, she wasn't, uh, he wasn't discreet at all. He was very clear about, no, you are a gay bastard. Uh, I hope Tsubaki makes his intent clear with this. Because I'm, not only am I curious, like, not only am I curious and also confused, but I don't want Tasuku to die inside from, like, having to ponder this over and over again. I hope they just kind of talk about it, like, very clearly outside of class at this point. Yeah, just come out with it. I don't care about UFOs. None of this makes any sense. Yeah, like, this feels like it could just be him asking uh, Tasuku out as a friend, or it could be a date, sort of? Like, none of this makes any sense. I agree with him. I really like that the manga is able to get across that feeling of confusion and of, like, what are you trying to say? Just come out and say it. It's so tasty. <laughs> Right, I, I completely understand this. I only came out very recently. See volume, the volume one reaction, and I can accept that. Like, in a way, your home life is its own sort of uh, goldfish ponds. Like that's the main reason why I didn't say anything for the longest time. Even though my parents ended up both accepting me, I didn't want to bring it up just because it was like, well, something about it just felt uncomfortable. I don't know if that's some sort of like residual homophobia that I've internalized. I think it might literally just be like, well, this is the one place where I don't have to, you know, where I can keep things simple. And revealing more of myself to my parents was complicated. And that's kind of just something I didn't want to deal with for a while. For far too long, to be honest. I should have done it earlier, but I can't fault myself for not doing it earlier. Because I still remember why I felt exactly like this. That's the entire reason why I brought it up. I just wanted a refuge that I could run away to and feel normal at. But at the same time, I looking back on it and looking at it through Tasuku's eyes right now, I can agree that it's not healthy. Just keeping quiet doesn't work. It Nothing gets resolved if you do that. <laughs> ah, he's so glittery! I would have been excited this was a secret facility where they were building gi mysterious gigantic weapons. Like, I guess occult works in the sense of, like, the Japanese sense of the term. But it seems like Tasuku more just enjoys fringe things. Or, you know, like, conspiracy stuff. I guess that's what people call it in English. It's more conspiracy stuff or, like, fringe theories than the occults. Occults tends to be more magic. I forgot their names in an instance. <laughs> that's amazing. Right, the fact that he brought along two girls really does make this annoying. Like, for Tatsuku specifically. Glad I didn't die back then. Aw, that's nice. The Croatian National Anthem. Okay, sure. <laughs> Is Tsubaki kun the type that spoils the ending of a movie? How cute. Oh my gosh. Like, right now, my current boyfriend is... He's the kind of person who takes a 22-minute episode of anything and makes it, like, 44 minutes long with all of his pausing and all of his, like, hey, no, I want to rewind that. Let's look at that thing again. I didn't, you know, I missed something in the background. And I love it. If it was anyone else, like, if my parents ever do that, I get annoyed. I don't say anything, but I do get annoyed. But when he does it, it's like, oh, wow, that's so cute. <laughs> love is bizarre. It really is. I can almost hear the Croatian national anthem playing. That's a very forward thing to do. What? For what purpose? What purpose? Like, yeah, I'd be tearing up too. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this feels like it's a date, but at the same time, he's bringing along these two girls. Like, what the fuck is happening? Like, what is this? <laughs> oh my god, Tusku is amazing when it comes to this description. This is great. It's great after getting tired from walking around so much. Mm -hmm. 
also I really do like this like again we were following this from Tasuku's point of view so he doesn't know what these two girls names are at all but that doesn't mean that the girls don't have personalities like they do and they actually get like a lot of interesting lines it's just Tasuku himself doesn't care about them whatever makes you think this is it about Shimanami I suppose yeah this is true like it's been a framing device so far, but I am curious to see, like, what Tasuku's My Shimanami is going to be. I assume it's going to be pictures of Cat Clouder, because nothing else about the city seems to excite him. So, I mean, I guess the other one could be pictures of Tsubaki, but that might be a bit too intense. Like, that might be a bit much for a school project. Uh... See, this is so uncomfortable now, because there's no reason why he should have to hide it. But at the same time, Cat Clowder felt like it felt comfy because people didn't talk about it. And now these two rando girls are learning about it. Like, what if they come here? What if they talk? Like, what if they decide to join? Like, uh, I feel anxious. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Your house is infested by centipedes by default, after all. What? <laughs> She's so interesting. <sighs> Ibaki, what the fuck are you doing? Subaki, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, stop it. Actually, stop it. Whoa. That is a fantastic shot. I don't think I didn't expect that. I don't think Tasuku expected it either. Like, holy crap. Also, I really like this framing. I mean, I know I, I tried to say that when I just kept saying that's a nice shot, but it really is a nice shot. Yeah, you're bad. I really like that because I was hoping that Tasuku would snap and just tell the guy he loves like, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but the fact that she was able to say it makes me respect her a lot. It makes me not respect Tsubaki at all, though. Yeah, thank you, nameless girl. <laughs> uh, she has a name, right? I kind of want to look at it now. Oh, I just realized he didn't actually like specify who was which girl, so I guess I can't use either of those names. I don't think you can. I understand the, si the societal pressure of it, though. Like, I absolutely understand that I am privileged by virtue of being a like non-fictional character. That I can see this as fictional, but like I do empathize deeply with Tasuku, and yet still, I guess just because of my own life experiences, I want to tell him like, come on, just just say something. I want to join Cat Clouder. Oh, I just realized like the series tends to do this. Not, I guess it's kind of a fractal. It's not really the way I want to say it though. I guess for now, I'll say fractal. This thing where like Tasuku and you know his generation go through something and then that is mirrored with someone else from like you know one of the other characters in cat clouder so right now as tasuku is going to through this whole thing of subaki being a dick and of those two other girls talking about oh hey i'd like to do something like that we have um i forgot his name but our um our trans man uh character here and then this girl like this woman who knows who remembers when he was, you know, when he presented as female, when he was, you know, in, you know, mid transition. Coming in here, most likely not LGBT in any way, just saying, like, hey, I, I want to join Cat Clouder. This. Yeah, I can see this discomfort. Ah. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, it's very difficult to explain a lot of the time that. There are some places where you want to be inclusive, but only to a select number of people, which means that you you are by nature being exclusive. But there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it delves into that whole idea of like, oh, safe spaces and whatnot. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that safe spaces can be toxic, but at the same time, I think that it's completely fine for someone to be able to say like, hey, I want to have this exclusive area. Like, even. Even places that are for whites only, as like you know, as loaded as that term is, and, and as much as a lot of the people campaigning for places like that are not doing it out of you know, the goodness of their hearts or out of a you know a place of equality, I I can't logically come up with a reason why you shouldn't be allowed to do that. In the same sense as like why you shouldn't be able to have like an LGBT only area or even like a gay only area. 
I feel like a lot of uh, one of the reasons I don't really like the extensions of LGBT when it comes to like everything is that sometimes you do want to just have a place where it's like, you know, just gay dudes, not even like an LGBT friendly space, just gay dudes or just lesbians. Gay dudes honestly have it really well. Lesbians ha are having their areas excluded, like erased constantly. <laughs> there are barely any lesbian bars in America now. And that's real fucked up. Because, I mean, women are genuinely in danger a lot of the time. And it feels really weird to try to convert lesbian areas or lesbian spaces into LGBT spaces. It's, it's a problem without a very clean solution. And I doubt I'm going to make one as I'm talking about a manga. So I suppose I'll just move forward before I dig myself into a deep hole that I can't get out of. Is this one of those things where I'm not supposed to ask what your real name is? Yeah, this could get ugly. She's clearly not the kind of person who should be here. So one thing I do like is that, you know, Anonymous is always chill. Anonymous is always cool. Anonymous is the kind of person who I feel like, you know, Anonymous really is the gatekeeper of this place. If she wants to be here, Anonymous could literally just say, I'm sorry, I don't want you to be here and make herself out to be the bad guy or... We know Anonymous is gender. They they always call Anonymous female, but I mean, not Anonymous is very uh, androgynous, so I don't remember. I, I think that is actually really cool that Anonymous is willing to be like, yo, the cool, aloof person who like funds everyone is willing to at times be like the weirdo or the bad guy for the sake of helping others. I think someone commented saying that Anonymous feels like a superhero in a way, and I kind of have to agree <laughs> or not a superhero, but like a hero. I'm sure there's some sort of um, metaphor here with the fact that the Shiminami area is like a bunch of uh, a bunch of islands connected by bridges and by, you know, small ferries. But I don't quite know what. So I guess I'll wait for a bit until my thoughts are a bit more like, you know, not muddled. OK, so it seems like she's fitting in. Right. Part of it is honestly just a name thing. Like I didn't. Because I, I'm so bad when it comes to names in general, I didn't remember that Utsumi-kun is, you know, that that's his name. And that Natsumi-chan would then be, like, the way that he would have been referred to when people, like, saw him as female. The, the idea of being dead named is something that I can't fully comprehend because I don't really have a, like, a serious analog to that in my own life. But from what I've heard, it's pretty awful. I'm trying to think of one, but... I don't have a serious reason like the closest I could come to is just like the fact that I have a lot of different handles online. That's that's not the same at all. So I'm going to stop. Ever since back then, that record player hasn't played anything. So I sent out for repairs. OK. Whoa, <laughs> that is a very mysterious restriction. Hmm. Like, I do hope we get a Chico arc at some point because he is such an interesting person. Like, if I had to guess, I, I'd assume that he's probably, if I had to guess, I would say that he's most likely gay and he lived through, you know, the very dark times of Russia slash the, um, you know, the Eastern Bloc. And because of that, like, you know, he's got a lot of experience with discrimination that the rest of the, you know, the rest of the cast can't not, like, even possibly uh, stack up with. That's also something really interesting. The fact that she keeps being brought here by her mom, but it's clearly just being done because her mom doesn't want to like you know find a daycare for her or you know she doesn't want her to stay at home like clearly she doesn't want to be here i'd be so happy if you helped us out since you have really good taste my chan oh that's really cute what the fuck are you doing subaki like really what yeah he is kind of scary like even without having a crush on him he feels so weird I'm learning more about him whenever I'm near him, and I want to learn even more about him. I want to fall even more in love with him. This woman. Jesus Christ, this woman. She's going to be the death of me. Uh, and even this, like, it comes down to him, right? Or not this property, right? Is it this one? I thought this was the one that they said they're going to turn into a gallery. Isn't the one he has, you know, control over a different one? In any case, I think this is really interesting that like she's entered this collective and she's already like 
she's trying to be genuinely nice. Like she's not pushing everyone else around. It's not as clear cut as that, but she kind of is imposing on everyone. In the end, this is Tasuku's choice. And like, he's going to have to decide eventually, but no matter what, it's going to be his decision. And that we'd just be going out for drinks with the girls who are in our same grade. That's I can see how that would feel nice to her. Like the idea of just like, I want to include I want to include Natsumi-chan, but at the same time, like the fact that she immediately, without even thinking, lumps him in with the girls is kind of disturbing. Even Tsubaki, for once, is like, you know, being like, okay, never mind. Like, he was about to say something, but yeah, even he understands, like, no, this is awkward. <laughs> this is not a place where you should be talking. All of them will accept you. She's saying it so casually, as if that's just, you know, <sighs> The series is doing such a good job at making her hateable without like being malicious. It's that that enraging feeling of like you just don't get it. Uh... Huh, that's a pretty good picture actually. It really is. Like that's quite evocative. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is happening? What is happening? Okay. Because of the way it was like shot, I thought that he was like he was going to like fly off the bridge or something. But okay. It's just Oh, that's such a good way of putting it. Like, the fact that he's just unconsciously speeding up. Again, like, when the characters are with Tasuku, they have to put on this face of, like, you know, being all right for his sake. But I like that. I like that he's willing to just, like, right here, like, he was willing to just break. Or, you know, he got to his breaking point. He was willing to just scream, damn it all to hell, because he doesn't want her to be here, right? Yeah. He doesn't live his life a gang of worked up. He's just Utsumi-san. This isn't about being a man coming out or being understood. He's just Utsumi-san. Right. Oh, that's such a good parallel to Tasuku. Like, Tasuku hasn't decided how he wants to live. Whereas, like, for better or for worse, Utsumi, like, he is living the way he wants to live. And yes, things still bother him. He still has problems, but... Yeah. Like, this isn't a good conclusion to come to, but I can understand the logic here. I can't be mad at uh, Tasuku because of it. It may be easy, but you need to be prepared for both sides to get hurt. It feels like we're building up to Tasuku coming out, or at least, like, not confessing to Tsubaki, but at least, like, coming out directly to Tsubaki. Like, just based on the events of this volume. Also, it's so weird that we haven't seen Misura yet. Like, I like it, though. I like that we're not, like, the plot lines aren't being jumbled up right now. Like, right now, we're focusing just on the fallout from that. And I guess, like, once the series is ready to tackle Misra's problems again, we'll get to them. But for now, we're just not. And I can respect that. I'm surprised he went, though. Right. I guess this is, like, this is a pretty big thing to do. To just go there and say, yeah, guess what? I'm a dude. Just set the record straight. Even if it's awkward or weird or whatever, like, hey, I'm a dude. I probably shouldn't even be here right now by virtue of me being a dude. But hey, you invited me, so I guess we're just going to do this. <laughs> I already punched that wall because of what she said. <laughs> That's a really good line. You can fight against malice, but there's no point in fighting good intentions. I think that is what freaks me out about this lady and also just in general, when it comes to someone who doesn't think they're doing a bad thing. It's just, it, you can't fight good intentions. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no, there's no point in, like, worrying over him. It's all up to him now, so let's just have fun with Mai. Ah, oh, this is so comfy. I love it. The lounge hasn't felt this comfy in quite a while, actually. This is a really nice, uh, I guess, part of the chapter. Come on, Mai-chan. You too, Tasukun. Oh, are they taking a picture? Or are they just hugging? <laughs> I guess they are. I guess they're just kind of having a hug party. That's pretty great. Of course, Anonymous isn't there, but I mean, that's Anonymous for you, right? Okay, so I guess now we're going to hear their real thoughts about him. Okay, I think... Okay, so again, like, she has kind of been learning from being part of Cat Clouder, but at the same time, like, she's a bit too, like... <laughs> She's a bit too correct, I suppose. Like, this is also a very real problem. This feeling of, like, 
you're being too nice or you know you're being too considerate like it's okay if people are a bit rude or a bit nosy as long as you know i am comfortable with it so like you shouldn't try that hard to protect me because then it just feels alienating <laughs> that's exactly what this is she could see that long beyond my feelings i wanted to help her there was an unconscious desire to be superior to her so i couldn't deny how shameful i've been that's the thing. Like, this is such an interesting arc because she isn't wrong with anything she's saying. She's upsetting, but she's trying to do the best she can. This is something that I... It's been, like, I don't think I've ever seen a manga try to specifically tackle this. And I've read a lot of, like, a lot of manga that deals with these sorts of subjects. And especially a lot of them that involve, like, difficult, you know, like, difficult people. But I don't think I've read anything besides Shimanami Tasagari that has tried to portray a character this flawed in a way that isn't, like, evil or malicious or bad. Like, just someone who feels bad about how they were in the past, and they're doing their best to try and be better, but at the same time, their best right now is still kind of awkward and kind of not wanted. Or even that, yeah. Thanks, Koyama san but I've had enough. She's doing her best to talk about this one thing that she thinks is important. You know, she's trying to make up for her past with him. But at the same time, like, it's just making him uncomfortable. And I think this is the most mature thing to do. Like, hey, even if it's a bit awkward, you know, thanks for bringing up these topics, but I don't want to talk about them. I just want to have, like, a reunion here. So I've had enough. Bye for now. <laughs> and when I said bye for now, I, I instinctively tried to stop the recording. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I'm not sued for stuff like that. Like, she's really trying to pressure him into doing this, but... No I guess the best way I can put it is, not every LGBT person is an LGBT spokesperson. In the same way that, like, not every black person can talk about black culture, or, like, you know, the struggles of black people living in America. Like, some people just live through things, but can't, like, you know, be an expert on them, or talk about them, or just, you know, educate others. As much as society, right, especially society right now, expects you to educate people when, you know, they don't know stuff and you know stuff, it's exhausting to deal with that. And I think that, like, people who have the stamina to constantly, like, talk about the same things and correct the same assumptions are amazing. Because if you stop, if you stop correcting people, then you get things like, like, a lot of, uh, like, conspiracy theories or, like, scams or whatnot, where, you know, if people stop talking about that pyramid scheme that's obviously a pyramid scheme, then at some point, it's going to get traction again because people aren't calling it a scam anymore because they're too tired. But there are still people out there who don't realize it's a scam, you know? There's always someone new who is about to learn something new, even if everyone else in the world seems to know about it. I have deep respect for people with this kind of stamina, while at the same time, I understand that I am not that kind of person for a lot of topics. And I shouldn't have to force myself to be that person because it's it's not suited to me. Like I'll do the best I can, but same with same with him. Like he just needs to be himself at this point. Yeah, it's not really part of his identity. He is just who he is. If you give trying to inform others, no one will understand. I don't want people like you to be misunderstood. She is so pure. That's exactly what I've been saying this whole time. But at the same time, it's not his burden to carry, right? That's a really good way of putting it. Like, by virtue of saying all this shit, it hasn't really been hurting him that much. It's been a little, but at the same time, he, she's also been, like, stealth insulting all the other members of Cat Clowder. This is, yeah, that was real difficult, but I cannot think of a better way he could have said this. That was so awkward and painful that both sides did the best they could there. <laughs> Wait a minute. So I guess that's just a thing. Like, the very first time we ever see Anonymous, she does, like, well, it wasn't this, but, like, she jumped off of this ledge, and Tasuku saw that. And we haven't really, like, touched on that since. But here, this is straight up just her flying again. I like that. It's, like, uh, it's magical realism. Oh, I just realized what kind of the problem was with him. He never had his Anonymous talk. With everyone else, like, they at least implied in Volume 1 that they all met Anonymous in similar ways. But the only one we really saw meet Anonymous was Tasuku. So I just kind of glanced over it as like, yeah, of course, they're not going to meet. But no, this is going to be that time. This is when he's going to either officially join Cat Clowder or not. 
because now he's having his official meeting with Anonymous. Yeah, I got a winner. You can tell me anything, but I'm not going to ask. Right, same rules he gave, uh, same rules she gave Tasuku. Are you a lesbian? Or did you used to be a guy? Or did you used to be a woman? And what about you? Are you a guy or a girl? Or are you gay? Right, I'm not here to lesson. You can tell me anything, but I'm not going to ask. Come on, Tsubaki. This is actually really great because Tsubaki is so fucking irritating. Like, because he doesn't... Like, it's so hard to get a read on what the fuck he's trying to do with uh, Tasuku. Uh, Anonymous's example here is perfect because now Tsubaki can't play games. He just has to say the truth. Fine, I guess he's not going to be able to talk to Anonymous right now. But this was the most real I think we've seen him in quite a while. And then we have, you know, that UFO floating away. I guess the UFO, if I had to figure it out right now, that's probably supposed to be like Tsubaki's weirdness. So the fact that it's up there is showing that, yeah, he is alienating himself from everyone. In this case, like, yeah, he even managed to alienate himself from Anonymous. Yep, he's a little annoyed. Okay, this is also good because I was kind of afraid that that's where they're going to leave it. But no, I think we're going to have like the full Tsubaki arc. Like he's going to have to like approach Anonymous and say like, hey, this is me. He's going to have to finally explain his deal. Right. It's, it's still fucking with them. You know, I think Tsubaki might not know. This entire time, I've assumed that he had like, you know, this solid identity. And I guess it's because I was looking at it through Tasuku's eyes. Like the fact that Tsubaki is mysterious and... There's this general impulse where if someone's mysterious, you want to believe that they know what they're talking about. Like, obviously that's wrong, but it feels like it should be right. <laughs> as strange as that is, it feels like, yeah, if they're being weird, that means that they, sh they have a good head on their shoulders. They know what's going on. No. I genuinely now think he doesn't know. Ah. Uh. This is, I think this is the first time he's really, like, made it clear. Before, it was confusing as to whether he was trying to tease Tasuku or not. But here, he's, like, it's weighing on him. And so, he was a little more clear than he usually is. Like, yeah, he is trying to tease Tasuku. He is trying to, like, mess with him. It's so stupid. At least play off the joke. Instead of getting embarrassed or thinking, why do you have to say something like that? The feeling I felt while up an instant was anger. Okay, this is good. This is progress forward. Like, before, Tasuku was playing along, or, like, not playing along, but, like, you know, he was just entering the turmoil that Tsubaki wanted. But now he's just pissed. Now he's just like, no, fuck you. Stop trying to bait me. Okay, if you get mad, you get worn out. If you don't get mad, it won't get through. If you live without getting mad, at the very least, you could end up invisible. That's a really good line. Hmm. I'm actually wondering what the answer to that is, because... Like, I would assume the answer is, yeah, of course Anonymous gets mad sometimes. We just don't see it that much. But at the same time, Anonymous kind of is invisible. Or at least, you know, she lives her life in this way where people don't really talk about her. Whoa. We really just kind of glazed over it all. I'm not going to that gay hangout anymore. Yeah. Okay. You're alone now. You're alone with Tsubaki. Tasuku, if you're going to explode, now is the time to just... To just... Walk up to that alien aspect of him. Walk up and just say, what is your fucking deal? Like, what is going on? Even though you could stay quiet, people are going to hate you. Gather together and stand out. All of you guys disgust me. Okay, I think it's self-hatred, right? It's got to be self-hatred. Enough already. Don't belittle me or the others. I think I'm gay. I like you, Tsubaki-kun. I just like you. That's all. That's enough for me. Oh my god, this is... Ah. Oh. I like guys, my heart races when I look at guys, so I was scared of others finding out. From when I was a kid, I thought I'd probably had to keep this a secret forever. I couldn't tell my parents, my friends, or anyone. Only afraid, but after I met the others at the lounge, I felt that I wasn't alone anymore. Oh my god, laying it all out on the table. Yeah, I mean, that really is Anonymous' strong point. No one understands her. She doesn't give straight answers. She's just a weird fucking person, but she doesn't deny anyone. I guess that's really it. Like, she doesn't deny me. She doesn't deny any member of Cat Clowder. Like, Cat Clowder itself isn't even something she created. She's kind of, like, put up the money. <laughs> and it kind of created itself because of that. Oh, he's getting so very real. This is fantastic. I want you to know that what you've said has hurt me. 
It's not like I want you to apologize or accept me. I just don't want you to hurt anyone else. I just don't want to see the guy like hurting anyone else anymore. Holy shit. Oh, wow. It got through. It got through Tsubaki. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah, so we still don't quite know his deal, but at the very least, it got through to him. There's some progress made. And, I mean, it's crazy that Tasuku finally did this. We've been building up to it for three volumes. And yet, I'm worried more about Tsubaki than anyone else. Like, I'm very happy for Tasuku. Don't get me wrong. But... The fact that it didn't lead to like an immediate like reveal of what Tusk or what Tsubaki's deal is just makes me worried for him, I guess. He's annoyed and upset and doesn't know what to do. I know because those tears were just like mine from that summer day a little while ago. Ah, it's fixed. This is great. Ah. This is ah, this is great. Mai really is starting to become part of Cat Clouder, like more so than her mom. You can't gauge the sense of distance between people unless you're sometimes in conflict with each other. That sort of thing will smash gentle hearts, but silence needs to be broken for some things so as to live while riding the same boats. That's a really interesting way of putting it. Even if we can't understand each other, I want to live in a world where we can live without having to understand each other. That's, yeah. I feel like the whole concept of people absolutely wanting to understand each other, or like, complete understanding, is, it's, it's a pipe dream. Like, the original Gundam is, in a way, kind of about that. And the fact that the Universal Century has continued for, like, forever. Over, like, on and on and on. And no point has humanity ever, like, fully managed to understand each other. Despite the first series, like, showing a way in which human beings can absolutely 100% understand each other. It, like, if a series like that can't do it, how, what, what hope do we have to doing it in real life? You know? So I guess wanting to live in a world where we don't have to understand each other, but we can still leave, live happily is noble, I suppose? It feels weird to call something like that noble. It feels like noble things should be like difficult or like nearly impossible, but I don't know. I guess settling is, in a way, also noble. I have success, a suggestion for you and Saki-san. How about we hold a wedding ceremony for you here, for you and her here at Triangle Manor? Okay. I wonder if that's what he wants to do then. Like, he could make Triangle Manor a chapel. Like, it could just be, like, just a wedding ceremony at this place without, like, deciding what it's going to be just yet. But that's a really interesting idea. Oh, man. Thank you so much, Hachimitsu Sans. Uh, what else do I really have to say? Like, what a good volume of Shimanami Tasugare. I guess I don't have any overall thoughts right now. <laughs> That was just, that was quite the experience on its own, without having to qualify it. Um, I thought it tackled a lot of really powerful themes. I guess I can't say anything about it because I've already said everything I can. <laughs> I really have. So, uh, what an unsatisfying way to finish this reaction, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a great series. I don't know if I'm going to continue Volume 4. Like, if we look at my um, Chapter 1's folder which is kind of where I put all the Shimanami Tasugare chapters once I decided I was going to pick up the series. Uh, there's a bunch of Volume 4 out right now, but I don't know if I want to do it now or if I want to wait. I think I might, like, give myself a week just to kind of read other stuff, and then I'll read these four chapters, and then whenever new chapters come out, I'll read them as they come out. Because I said at the very start, I wasn't sure if I could do, like, a reaction to one chapter of Shimanami Tasugare. But to be honest... I think the reason why I don't have much to say after an entire volume is because so much happens in each chapter. <laughs> so I think I'll be able to do, like, singular chapter reactions very easily. What a fantastic series. I hope it gets picked up for an official release. Like, a lot of LGBT manga have been doing really well. Like, um... Let's look at some of the Amazon bestsellers. Uh, Lesbian Experience Romance. I actually, um, I own a lot of LGBT manga now that I think about it. Because I love a lot of these series. Like, uh, I pre-ordered My Brother's Husband Volume 2. I own Volume 1 physically. I think I actually pre-ordered Volume 2 physically. So I'll be getting that some, at some point. Uh, I have Girlfriends. Uh, Let's Me Experience Romance. Wait a minute, Volume 3? 
what is happening here? I thought there were only two volumes, right? Like, I thought the English release was two combined. Oh, no, never mind. I bought the compiled volumes, but I guess they weren't like, yeah, I guess they have singular volumes in addition to the compiled. One. Or, oh, no, this is the Kindle version. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I see this. Okay. Uh, what was I trying to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just, um, LGBT-focused manga is doing really well in English right now. Like, My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness did fantastically. The, um... How am I trying to put this? Like, the sequel is also doing really well in terms of pre-sales. Um... My brother's husband is doing really well. My brother's husband is also not being released by a, a like a manga releasing company. Like Pantheon mostly does. If you look up like Pantheon's uh, releases, a lot of what they do is just like very artsy stuff. Or when they, when they're not doing graphic novels, they do a lot of just like weird sort of like fringe stuff. So they don't really do manga. They decided to pick up volume one entirely because of how like crazy and weird and like just like genre changing it was in Japan which is really nice so I guess what I'm trying to say is just if like if Shiminami Tasugare was ever going to be, get picked up now is definitely the time where it could happen oh yeah I also have I'm gonna buy the bride uh, the bride was a boy everything I've seen about it looks super cute and super cool uh I should cut this off right now so that was Shiminami Tasugare um I'm having a fantastic time with it Thank you guys so much for watching this. Bye for now. Yeah, yeah.